to the practice of law in the state of Delaware to say. All right, all right. And that, think about that. Here's the first man, this guy was brilliant, yeah. and he didn't get admitted till after the 50s in Delaware. Mm. To the, I mean, well, he enlisted a young Jewish lawyer from the NAACP named Jack Greenberg to help him devise a legal strategy to get rid of racial segregation in Delaware schools. In 1952, in Delaware, for the first time in our country's history, in Beulah versus Gebhardt and Belton versus Gebhardt. Right. By the way, any Delawareans here today? Yeah. Right. All right. First time ever, segregated white public schools were ordered to admit black children. Lewis L. Redding's argument in those early Delaware cases laid the legal framework for Brown versus the board. Right. His story, a timeless truth about America, when we make real the promise of America for all Americans, the nation changes for the better, everything from the economy to everything grows, everything grows. Yeah. After Brown versus board decision, the public schools gradually, and often much too slowly, were integrated. Graduation rates for black and Latino students increased significantly, though. The Brown decision proves a simple idea. We learn better when we learn together. Yes, yes. That's why my administration is increasing funding for schools to bring together students from different backgrounds. My Department of Education is investing $300 million, including another $20 million announced today to support diversity in our schools. Yes, yes. We're also we're also funding efforts to increase diversity in teaching professions. So, yes, yes. because as the president said, black students, but particularly young black men, re re react to black teachers. Yes. St black students who have black teachers are significantly more likely to graduate from high school yes. and enroll in college. It makes a difference and it matters. Yes. My Department of Education provided an additional almost half a billion dollars, $450 million, to ensure teachers in our school reflect the diversity in our country. We're just getting started. This money is going to go toward training the next generation of teachers at HBCUs, tribal colleges, and minority-serving institutions. <laughs> By the way, not because I'm married to one, but we need to give teachers a raise. <laughs> I mean it. Another lesson from Brown is that every child deserves the quality education. How can we think in just simple terms? How can we have the strongest economy in the world without the best education in the world? I mean, it's not possible. That taps into the full talents of our entire nation. And the answer starts with childhood, early childhood education. Because of the nation's legacy of discrimination, the black children start school with an average of seven months behind their white peers in reading. But one year of universal high-quality pre-K could eliminate 98 percent of that gap, just one year and children go to preschool who are nearly 50 percent more likely to finish high school and go on to earn a two-year or four-year degree no matter what their background is. That's why my administration is working to support black children. And as soon as I came to office, I signed the American Rescue Plan. Yes. And I'm going to be political, but I just say this because we're having problems. Not one Republican voted for it, not one. But the American Rescue Plan expanded child care tax credits to deliver monthly checks to working families to cut black child poverty in half. <laughs> now, Republican friends, let it expire. But I'm going to keep fighting to reestablish, and we're going to get it reestablished. Yes. And I'm going to keep fighting to make sure preschool is universal for every three and four year old in America. We can afford to do this. It's not hard. Instead of giving multi-billion dollar breaks to the super wealthy, let's make the wealthy begin to pay their fair share of taxes. We can afford all this. I'll just slow up for just one second here. Add lib a little bit here because I'm going to get in trouble for doing keeping you longer. But you know, we have a thousand billionaires in America. Thousands. I'm a capitalist. You can make all that money fine. Just pay your fair share. Well, here's the deal. You know what the tax, federal tax rate is for a billionaire in America? 8.3 percent. If you just raised it to 25 percent, we raised 400 million billion dollars over the next 10 years. That could pay for all of this, cut the deficit, and do so much more. Just being, just pay your fair share. Look, it's not only good for children; it's good for the country when we have early education, and it grows the economy. 
We're also working to ensure every child, no matter what their zip code, has access to quality education experience in K through 12. The American Rescue Plan delivered $130 billion to American schools, most ever in funding public education in our nation's history. And we added another $202 billion annually to Title I funding, support school students that are most in need. These dollars help for things like tutoring, paying teachers are for what they deserve, providing more advanced casework and coursework as well. While college degrees are still a ticket to the middle class, a ticket is becoming too expensive. Too many, too many young people, black students, are dealing with unsustainable debts in exchange for a college degree. That's why my administration is taking the most significant action, notwithstanding the Supreme Court tried to stop me, to provide student debt relief, most supreme ever. I've been able to relieve $160 billion in student debt for over 4.5 million Americans, including a significant number of black borrowers. That means they can now start a family, buy a home, save for their children's school, and give back to their communities. It also increased the maximum Pell Grant to, by $900, the largest increase in a decade. And it matters because over 60 percent of black students rely on Pell Grants to go to college. And something I'm really proud of, we're making historic investments in historic black colleges and universities. Now, I'm from Delaware, so I go along with Delaware State being the best HBCU. <laughs> Kamala keeps saying it's Howard. <laughs> and I'm going now, I'm going Sunday to make a speech at that other place. Uh, that, that man's called More, is it Morehouse? <laughs> Morehouse. I got more Morehouse men in my administration than Morehouse. But regardless of loyalties, it's clear, HBCUs are vital to our nation's progress. I mean it. That's not hyperbole. HBCUs are responsible for 40 percent of black engineers in America, 50 percent of black teachers, 70 percent of all black doctors and dentists, 80 percent of all black judges. And by the way, I put more on the bench than anybody ever had. and 100 percent of black vice presidents. <laughs> you got it. HBCUs also don't have endowments like other colleges and universities that are able to fund research labs and so much more. Well, Kamala and I made a commitment to lift HBCUs up, and we're keeping that commitment. Today, I'm proud to announce, as was mentioned earlier by the President, that we've invested over $16 billion in HBCUs, by far the most ever of any administration and a combination of almost all administrations. <laughs> this investment has helped HBCUs do everything from build student housing to study climate science to create health research labs, prepare black students for labs and industries of the future because they don't have the endowments to do it themselves now. But let's be clear. I know real power when I see it. Yeah. Later today, yeah. in the Oval Office, I'll be meeting with the presidents of the Divine Nine. Oh. You all think I'm kidding, don't you? Well, I'm proud that we are the first to you, — you got it. <laughs> I can tell there's no — anyway. We're the first administration in history to have a working group from the Divine Nine in the White House. And I asked them to do that from the very beginning. But we know 70 years after Brown versus the Board, there are some forces trying to deny freedom of opportunity for all Americans. A few minutes ago, I talked with some of the Little Rock Nine who were determined to integrate a public school in Little Rock, Arkansas, 67 years ago. I'd like to recognize them for their courage and their, would they, if they can, if you're able, please stand and rise so we can all see you. Yeah. 
Thank God Eisenhower was president. Thank God we had someone who stood up. The Little Rock Nine were met with vitriol and violence. Today, the resistance comes in other insidious forms. An extreme movement led by my predecessor and his MAGA Republican allies, backed by an extreme Supreme Court, gutted affirmative action in college admissions. My predecessor and his extreme MAGA friends are now going after diversity, equity, and inclusion all across America. They want a country for some, not for all. And let's not kid ourselves, folks. This is the God's truth, what I'm saying. My predecessor and his extreme MAGA friends are responsible for taking away other fundamental freedoms, from the freedom to vote to the freedom to choose. But I've always believed that the promise of America is big enough for everyone to succeed. And I mean that, everyone to succeed. That's what Brown is all about. That's what we're all about. That's what America's about. Let me close with this. On Sunday, I'm attending the commencement of Morehouse College, one of our nation's most important institutions. Morehouse was founded after our nation's civil war to help prepare black Americans who were formerly enslaved to enter the ministry, earn an education, and usher them from slavery to freedom. The founders of Morehouse understood something fundamental. Education is linked to freedom. Because to be free means to have something that no one can ever take away from you. And that's the power of an education. That's why the Brown decision to commemorate today is so important. The work of building democracy is a possibility of a democracy worthy of our dreams starts with opening the doors of opportunity for everyone without exception. Yes. And we can do it. We just have to remember who we are. Yes. We are the United States of America. There's nothing beyond our capacity when we decide to work together. May God bless you all. And thank you all for all the bravery you've demonstrated over the years. And may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Proud to be with you. Thank you.